How about the boiling point of water? Can we work this out from first principles? Well, I guess the basic idea would be that each atom has a energy in moving around of about three halves kT. And we know that the bonds between atoms have an energy of about 10 to the minus 18 joules. So we can set these equal, say that three halves kT it's about equal to 10 to the minus 18 joules and solve to get a temperature that would tell us how hot it would need to be to break these bonds. But that won't really work for water. First of all, this energy here is the energy needed to put an electron right out of an atom. That's similar to the energy for a really strong bond like a carbon-carbon bond, a covalent bond or something like that. But the bonds between water are much weaker than that. How much weaker? Well, we can estimate that by looking at the latent heat of vaporization of water. Now, the latent heat tells us how much energy you need to turn a kilogram of water at 100 degrees C into a kilogram of steam at 100 degrees C. So it's the energy needed to break the hydrogen bonds to turn water into steam at the same temperature. And for water, it's a whopping 2.26 by 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram needed to turn water into steam at the same temperature. So that's how much energy you need to turn a kilogram of water into steam. What does that correspond to each bond? Well, let's assume you have one bond per molecule. Each molecule has a mass roughly equal to the atomic mass of uh, water, which is 2 for the hydrogen and 16 for the oxygen times the atomic mass unit. So you divide 1 kilogram by this to work out how many atoms are present. Then you divide the latent heat by the mass and you end up with a bond energy It's actually about 10 to the minus 20 joules. Well, that's an approximate calculation. We're assuming one bond per molecule. There are probably two or three bonds per molecule, but that's not going to be too far wrong. And this is a plausible number. It's quite a bit weaker than this, as you'd imagine for the hydrogen bond being much weaker than a strong covalent bond. OK, so now what we can do is we can say it'll melt, it'll boil, when the typical thermal kinetic energy is equal to this 10 to the minus 20 joules. If we solve that, we find that T equals 10 to the minus 20 over 3 halves kT, which comes out at about 400, 3 halves K, I should say, no T on the bottom, which comes out at 460 degrees Kelvin, which is actually not too far wrong. It's actually we need 373 Kelvin to boil, but that's not too bad. It's a little bit higher than the real boiling point. And the reason for that is that not all the molecules have the same amount of energy. So let's say this is the average energy, average, and this is the number of molecules. You can plot a histogram, and what you'll find is that at any given time, some molecules have less energy and some have more than the average. This distribution can be calculated. It's called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. We'll do it in second year thermodynamics. But the crucial point is, even if the average molecule doesn't have enough energy to break the bonds and escape, the ones down here at the tail might well have. So even though the average energy is too low to boil, let's say this is the energy needed to break the bonds, all you need is a small number to be over this, and then these ones will break away and fly off as vapour. That will then leave the rest of the molecules at a lower speed. But as these other molecules bash into one another, it'll get averaged down, so more will appear over here and disappear. So you'll steadily lose vapour from the tail of the distribution. So in fact, you'd expect the average energy when it boils to be less than the energy needed to actually break the bonds by at least a little bit, because some molecules are going to be rather hotter. And this is actually why sweating cools you down. When you sweat, you get water on your surface, uh, on your skin. Some of these water molecules are going to be going faster than others. The fast ones will escape, leaving the cool ones behind. And that's what stops you from dying of heat on a hot day. So this distribution, the fast molecules going away, turns out to be fairly important.